Thank you, Annette. That was wonderful. And that was Sati for anyone who was wondering. And uh, I'm Scarlett Tripsmith. Hello and welcome to our online service of the Humboldt Unitarian Universalist Fellowship. My name is Scarlett Tripsmith and I will be your technical liaison for today. And if this is your first time joining us, please, we ask you to introduce yourself in the chat um, to everyone. Uh, and as you can see, you are muted. However, we will be breaking into some fun activity breakout rooms at the end of the service so you can converse with your fellow congregants. Um, we ask that um, if you feel comfortable, please grace us with your beautiful faces um, and keep your videos on. In our UU tradition, we like to take a moment to acknowledge what our community is going through on a personal level. So with that tradition, we do joys, sorrows, and celebrations. So today, if you would like to send those joys, sorrows, and celebrations to Bonnie McGregor in the chat. So if you go to the chat and when it says send to, if you find Bonnie McGregor, then it'll work. <laughs> Um, so I am deeply grateful to be a part of this community and during these times when we cannot safely meet together, these online services are our way of connecting and continuing to keep the mission of our congregation alive in our own lives and in the world. This month, our theme is stillness and out of stillness comes rejuvenation, creativity and drive. And we're glad you're here and we ask you to join us in this drive of embracing diversity and empowering connection and engaging in the work. We like to acknowledge that the land on which we live is, is a traditional home of the Wiat people, and we remind ourselves that indigenous people are a part of our community and continue to experience the effects of colonization today. As well as we are committed to the fight and the worth and dignity of ind indigenous people in our community and around the world. We commit ourselves to the work for a world in which the lives, work, bodies, dreams, and leadership of black people are honored and respected. We want to remind ourselves that we must put our words and our principles into actions every day for justice of the common good. But today, let us sit in stillness and enjoy our inner exploration. So today, we welcome and thank you again for being with us. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Bonnie McGregor with our opening words. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'd like to uh, add my welcome to all of you this morning. Uh, whether you're new to the fellowship or continue here as part of our community or have never left, even though you're far away. Um, the Humboldt Unitarian Universalist Fellowship right now is, is a lay-led fellowship. And so we're always grateful when a teacher and or a preacher comes in our midst because we very much appreciate their taking us to a deeper and uh, wider understanding. And so we're very grateful this morning when we thought of addressing uh, stillness, we immediately thought of uh, the Buddhist tradition, and we're really happy to have Zen teacher Eugene Bush with us today. We first became aware of him, uh, except for some of our members who may have sat with him at the Zen uh, group here in Arcata, um, uh, through True North, where he served with both of our previous ministers as a Buddhist who is very much engaged in the community. He um, began his uh, formal Zen practice in 1982. And he retired just recently as a paid, his paid work as a teacher in a public alternative high school in Santa Cruz. So obviously he put that Zen practice to work through the years. Um, in, uh, it was, uh, he received his Dharma transmission from Catherine Thanos in 2010. And he has been a teacher in the, um, a, a leader of the Santa Cruz Zen Center and uh, came to the Arcata Zen group in 2013. He also has occasional forays into the Hartford Street Zen Center and to the uh, queer Dharma at uh, the San Francisco Zen Center. 
Um, he is a, such a wonderful person to have in our midst, then I'm very grateful that he's here today. I just wanted to um, to say that in the midst of this holiday season, and we're really getting into the midst of it with all the meaning and memories and must do's, it's really seems to be a gift to be able to pause for a while and to hear from, um, it, to do some reflection in a Buddhist tradition. We hear so often these days from spiritual leaders and from our friends that what we really need to do is slow down and breathe and just be present. And while we know these are wise words and they work when we try them, it's really one of the hardest things to do in the best of times, even if you've done it over and over again. Slow down, sit, breathe, be present. So we're gonna do that together this morning so we can practice it together and help each other and with the guidance of Eugene Bush. But to make that real, I'd li like to ask you to actually sit and rest in the experience. Just as if we, you had walked into a meditation hall or back into our own sanctuary. And I ask that you not write anything in the chat to everyone because it's like popping up in the middle of service and saying something. It distracts our attention and it disturbs our experience. So notice those thoughts that you want to share, but set them aside, let them go for now. And at the end of the service, it's a wonderful time to share with each other in our breakout rooms. Now, having said this, I do want you to send me your joys and sorrows and celebrations, but be sure to address it to me in the chat because this is such an important part of the service and it's so much on our hearts that we want to know what's really urgent for you and what you may be going through. So, and then I also encourage you to sing along with the songs. They are intentionally songs that we hope will stay with you and reverberate throughout uh, in your heart as you walk through the day whether it's on a path or doing the dishes or wherever you are. This is part of the experience of meditation and slowing down and being present. And that's very much the spirit in which we're offering the very last song, which is Ode to Joy, which was uh, written by Beethoven um, using the poem because he was inspired by home, a poem by Sch, uh, Schiller, who was so grateful after the end of war, the wars that they had gone through and the, the, um, the experience of division and hopelessness. And so it's though this tune and uh, has sometimes been uh, misappropriated and misused, I hope today we'll be able to just sit and let the experience um, amaze us as we listen to the music and watch the video. So let us settle in and I will now um, ask Eugene Bush to begin the sacred part of our service. Good morning, friends. I'll offer us meditation instruction and a little bit of narrative as we go. Buddhism in general and Zen in particular, very somatic experience. So please let yourself be supported by this.
Please first find your posture, an upright spine. Find where you are in contact with your cushion or your chair and be stable. If you're on a cushion, make sure your knees are in contact with the earth. If you're on a chair, put your feet firmly on the floor. In this posture, we allow the natural curve to occur in the low back and gently rock right and left, left and right to find your center in that direction, forward and back to find your center in that direction. And then just rest. You may find that you would be helped by counting your breath from one to 10. In breath, out breath counts one. And two. And three. Please continue following your breath. In this practice, our eyes are open. This serves in order to keep us in contact with the world. We're not trying to go away. We stay in contact with the world. Our eyes are open. Our ears are open. All sense gates are open. Balanced, relaxed, and alert non-judgmentally observing whatever arises. Thoughts may pop up. Sounds in the environment. Thoughts about the sounds in the environment. Just let this all be the surface and recognize that there is a body that is stable, breathing, present. I'll offer you a visualization. You might have to do a little work with this one. Imagine a jar with water and river sand. There's a lid on this jar. Shake up that jar with river sand and slowly, slowly watch the heavy bits sink and settle. The lighter bits float around for a while. They too will settle. A new flurry of thoughts or sounds. Jar is all shaken up again. Just let it settle. There is a body. This is your body. Stable. Breathing. Present. Relaxed yet alert. For a chalice lighting this morning is from Mary Oliver's poem, Mindful. Cynthia is going to help me to light the chalice.
Every day, every day, I see or hear something that more or less kills me with delight, that leaves me like a needle in the haystack of light. It was what I was born for, to look, to listen, to lose myself inside this soft world, to instruct myself over and over in joy and acclamation. Nor am I talking about the exceptional, the fearful, the dreadful, the very extravagant, but of the ordinary, the common, the very drab, the daily presentations. Oh, good scholar, I say to myself, how can you help but grow wise with such teachings as these? The untrimmable light of the world, the oceans shine, the prayers that are made of grass. Now will you join me in renewing the aspiration of this fellowship, our promise to each other as we practice our UU principles. May love be the spirit of this fellowship. May the quest for truth be its sacrament and service be its prayer to dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge in freedom, and to help one another in fellowship. This is our aspiration. I'm delighted this morning to have uh, two mindfulness practitioners from our own fellowship uh, to read the story for all ages, with Therese Fitzmorris, and then to lead us in this, a song for all ages, her daughter Candace, both of whom um, brought mindfulness and continued to bring mindfulness into their daily practice. Um, Therese as a former re religious education teacher who, who instructed many of us um, in these practices. So Therese, I'm so happy that you're here today and Candace. Good morning. Cadence, Cadence, I'm sorry. I did that. Uh, no, my apologies. Fine. I love your name. So I especially am sorry. It's all right. Thank you, Bonnie. You know, when we picked out her name in the baby book, it said people will frequently call her Candace instead of Cadence. So the baby book people were right. So I'm really grateful to be here this morning. And Bonnie, thank you for the invitation to read this book. And Eugene, thank you for suggesting it. Um, this book first came to me when I was teaching preschool and Cadence was one of the members of that preschool community here in our home. Um, and it was one of my children's favorites. We haven't read it in quite a while, so it was quite a joy to get to revisit it. So it is um, a longer storybook, so I'm actually going to only read an excerpt of it. I'm going to read the beginning of it. There are three Zen shorts um, that are part of the story. Um, but I'm only going to share one with you today. Um, so I am going to switch so that you all can see the beautiful artwork. The name of the book is Zen Shorts by John J. Moon. Michael, there's a bear outside, said Carl. A what? called Michael. A bear. He's really big and he's in the backyard. What's he doing? Michael asked. He's sitting. He has an umbrella, said Carl. An umbrella? By the time the boys got outside, their sister, Addie, was already talking with him. I'm sorry for arriving unannounced, 
said the bear. The wind carried my umbrella all the way from my backyard to your backyard. I thought I would retrieve it before it became a nuisance. He spoke with a slight panda accent. Michael introduced himself. Then Addie introduced Carl because Carl was shy around bears that he didn't know. And this is how Addie, Michael, and Carl first met Stillwater. Addie and Michael both have an opportunity to spend some time with Stillwater and they each get a story but I've chosen the last story in the book to share with you today, which is the story that Carl, the youngest member of the family, receives from Stillwater. A few days later, Carl went to visit Stillwater. Michael said I couldn't bring over our stuff to go swimming. I'm mad at Michael. He's always telling me what to do, so I brought everything. Hmm, said Stillwater. It's a little pool. I don't know if all those things will fit. Let's see, Carl said. Let's see, said Stillwater. Stillwater looked at the pool. The things can go swimming, but we can't, he said. I brought too much stuff, said Carl. That's okay, said Stillwater. I'll help you carry it home later. Why does, always, why does Michael always have to tell me what to do? Carl said. If he were here, I would climb up really high and I would jump on him like this and I'd do a big smash like this. Later, Carl and Stillwater had tea. Carl, said Stillwater, you spent the whole day being angry with Michael. Did you notice how much fun we had? Carl watched the steam rise up from his tea. I'm sorry I brought all this stuff, Carl said. You don't need to be sorry, said Stillwater. Right now, you need to carry. Hold on tight and I will tell you a story. A heavy load. Two traveling monks reached a town where there was a young woman waiting to step out of her sedan chair. The rains had made deep puddles and she couldn't step across it without spoiling her silken robe. She stood there looking very cross and impatient. She was scolding her attendants. They had nowhere to place the packages they held for her, so they couldn't help her across the puddle. The younger monk noticed the woman and said nothing and walked by. The older monk quickly picked her up, put her on his back and transported her across the water, then put her down on the other side. She didn't thank the older man. She just shoved him out of the way and departed. As they continued on their way, the young monk was brooding and preoccupied. After several hours, unable to hold his silence, he spoke out. That woman back there was very selfish and rude but you picked her up on your back and carried her and then she didn't even thank you. I set the woman down hours ago, the older monk replied. 
why are you still carrying her? Do you think I have carried it long enough? Said Stillwater. Yes, said Carl. Good, said Stillwater. And this is how Addie, Michael, Carl, and Stillwater became the best of friends. Thank you so much. That Therese, you're frozen. So my tech, our, our computer kicked us off and booted us back on right away. So, you know, the irony of the, the opportunity to practice the patience, right? So beautiful. Um, so I just wanted to shift over to say that, you know, this song that um, Cadence is going to share with you kind of came to our family at the same time that this book did when I was teaching preschool. And the song is called Loving Kindness. It was written by a woman named Charity Khan. She's a Bay Area artist. Um, and a dear friend of mine from the Bay Area sent it to me thinking that it would be a good song for me to sing with the preschool students. And I was thinking that as we um, practice the song together, that part of the spirit of the song is sending yourself loving kindness, but also um, practicing spending, sending loving kindness to those that you may be in conflict with. So Cadence learned this when she was two, I think, um, and she loves to sing. So she has... Um, asked if she could teach it to you all today. So she's gonna begin. Okay, so for this song, we are going to do a call and response. And when I put my hands to my heart, that means that I will sing. And when I do this, that means that you can repeat what I say. Okay, so. May I be happy, may I be well. May I be happy, may I be well, may I be safe and sound, may I be safe and sound, may I be peaceful, may I be at ease, may I be peaceful, may I be at ease, with love in my heart and all around. With love in my heart and all around. Okay, so now I'm going to sing it through three times with May I. And you can join in when you think you know it and you're ready. May I be happy, may I be well, may I be safe and sound. May I be peaceful, may I be at ease, with love in my heart and all around. May I be happy, may I be well, may I be safe and sound. May I be peaceful, may I be at ease, with love in my heart and all around. May I be happy, may I be well, may I be safe and sound. May I be peaceful, may I be at ease, with love in my heart and all around. Um, 
Okay, so now I'm going to sing it three more times, but instead of saying may I, I'm going to say may you. You can pick someone that is either really easy to love or someone who you've recently had a conflict with to send this song to. Okay, so. May you be happy, may you be well, may you be safe and sound. May you be peaceful, may you be at ease, with love in my heart and all around. May you be happy, may you be well, may you be safe and sound. May you be peaceful, may you be at ease, with love in your heart and all around. May you be happy, may you be well, may you be safe and sound. May you be at ease, oh, may you be at ease, with love in my heart and all around. Okay, now this time we're going to say, Instead of saying me, me or you, we're going to say we and send this song to our whole community. So, may we be happy, may we be well, may we be safe and sound. May we be peaceful, may we be at ease, with love in our hearts and all around. May we be happy, may we be well, may we be safe and sound. May we be peaceful, may we be at ease, with love in our hearts and all around. May we be happy, may we be well, may we be safe and sound. May we be peaceful, may we be at ease, with love in our hearts and all around. Thank you very much for this opportunity. We look forward to the rest of the, hearing the rest of the service. What a lovely way to introduce our Joey Sorrow sorrows and celebrations. It's, it's just a way to hold each other as I read what has come in from each of you in the chat. And as I drop a pebble in our water of, to reverberate out to each of us. So this is from, let's see. Oh, okay. I don't plug it in okay. My, <laughs> So this is from uh, Junko, June and David Davis. We're pleased to join you and see Jean again. And we're so pleased to have you here. Um, this is from Chip Sharp. Honor tax payments by any of us can be mailed to the Weot tribe. And he gives an address which uh, is uh, 1000 Weot Drive in Lolita, 95551. So concern, and he also sends what I think is on many of our hearts, concern for all the residents of Granada Rehab and Wellness. He talked to Judith Berry this morning and, and she said that she is feeling healthy. And he wants to thank you, uh, send a thank you to Sylvia, Wally, and David for standing with the Black Lives Matter and Huff Banner yesterday. And thanks to the Weather Service for delaying the rain so that they could stay dry. Oh. Cynthia reminded me I had forgotten to put the pebbles in. <laughs> thank you. So Therese said, I'd like to drop a pebble for one of our fourth grade members, Galena Goble. Her grandmother, not Laura Withers, her paternal grandmother uh, died in a car accident a little over a week ago. So may we send her and her family love, support, and light.
from Debbie. I have gratitude for close friends and the joy they bring. Last night, Elizabeth Harrington and Harrison came over to my house and we carefully and socially distanced and reveled in each other's company. This is from Suli Mossman. In memory of longtime UU feminists, Liz Fisher and Meg Bowen. Bowman. Meg passed in her sleep in late November and Liz in September. Both were very active leaders for many years, along with Roseberry Matson in national, international, Pacific Central District and women in religion circles. Meg in her usual organized way it had a pile of solstice greetings ready to mail to her large circle of friends. <clears throat> Excuse me. A UU humanist feminist, we'll always remember her amazing, clever feminist songs, skits, and women's issues. About women's issues, the suffragettes, and politics. We're grateful to Liz Fisher as the author of the Women's Spirituality Curriculum. Rise up and call her name. Both Meg and Liz have been dear friends to many in the fellowship dating back to the early 70s and the Pacific Central District Annual Women and Religions Retreat. It does seem that many of our wise ones are passing, passing out of this realm. So may they, uh, may they watch over us and get us through. This is from Suzanne asking for healing prayers for her husband, Rabbi Bob. From Irit, if not already said, but I think it's good to say it. So happy Nancy Cook at Granada is feeling much better and doing her rug making again. I think having 71 elders at Granada come down with COVID and 14 staff members in our local community has touched us all in a way that um, perhaps it brought it all home uh, very powerfully, what we're all going through in this country. So I'd like to, um, yes, hope that we can join together in uh, sending our compassion to all of them and support to make it through these times. And from Kim Tripsmith, blessings on the passing of our dear friend, Hal, who was filled with kindness his whole life. Almakua, Hal. And this last one from uh, Scarlet, happy Hanukkah to all of you. Boy. So my, uh, my computer is responding to the sudden rain. This last uh, pebble is for all those thoughts and feelings, memories left in our hearts and left unsaid today. We'll now share one minute of silence, followed by a reading. He's still there.
Good morning. Maylee Scott is a Zen teacher who wrote this piece in 1994 for an interfaith gathering. It is titled Prayer for Peace. May I be well, loving, and peaceful. May all beings be well, loving, and peaceful. May I be at ease in my body, feeling the ground beneath my seat and feet, letting my back be long and straight, enjoying breath as it rises and falls and rises. May I know and be intimate with body-mind, whatever its feelings or mood, calm or agitated, tired or energetic, irritated or friendly, breathing in and out, in and out, aware moment by moment of the risings and passings. May I be attentive and gentle towards my own discomfort and sufferings. May I be attentive and grateful for my own joy and well-being. May I move toward others freely and with openness. May I receive others with sympathy and understanding. May I move towards readiness, towards the suffering of others with peaceful and attentive confidence. May I recall the Bodhisattva of compassion, her 1,000 hands, her instant readiness for action, each hand with an eye in it, the instinctive knowing what to do. May I continually cultivate the ground of peace for myself and others and persist, mindful and dedicated to this work independent of results. May I know that my peace and the world's peace are not separate, that our peace in the world is a result of our work for justice. May all beings be well, happy, and peaceful. Now I invite you to make your offerings of love and generosity to the fellowship as we enjoy Annette's musical offering of love.
I want to um, open by saying that my internet connection, like many in the rain, is a little bit unstable. If I disappear, don't worry, I'll walk across the street to the temple and get on a different way. So if that should happen, please enjoy your breath for a couple of minutes while I change venue. <clears throat> This time of year in my faith, we recognize Buddha's awakening 2,563 years ago. He saw a morning star after the four watches of the night. We can understand that as one 24 hour period, or we can understand that in mythical time. He learned how to articulate the truth of interconnection and the truth of transience. And most specifically, he learned how to articulate the truth of causation. And therefore, the possibility of release from suffering. He began to teach this when he was invited, and he offered several strategies for recognizing our unity and our already existing awakeness. I'll share a couple of those strategies with you today. And I already have actually that seated meditation from the very beginning is accessible to you at any time. So like Michael, the child in the story, realizing that he kind of missed his pool party by being mad at his brother, we do that in life. We kind of miss the moment because we're busy being or trying to be somewhere else. We can actually cultivate the capacity for finding patience and resilience, for finding compassion and wisdom, as in the song. And this requires the capacity to return again and again to equanimity. In meditation, we cultivate that capacity by stilling the body and mind, beginning with the breath, and including our surroundings. And this prepares us to move in the world with intention and with grace. Back and forth we move from stillness to activity again, knowing that our peace and our peace in the world, as May Lee said, are not separate. May Lee's prayer that you just heard, she was a wonderful teacher. She made reference to Avalokiteshvara. This uh, archetypal figure has a variety of names. You might know her as Kuan Yin, as Kanon. Whatever the name, how is it that we could have such confidence in an instinctive knowing what to do? In this topsy-turvy era that we are in, it seems as there's so much to fix. It has seemed that all our efforts in peacemaking and the hard-won progress in equality and social justice have been undermined in some ways. I want to say about that, that it's actually not that things are getting worse, it is simply that things have been revealed. So now more than ever, it's necessary to renew our deepest intentions beyond any discouragement and beyond anger. Peace and enlightened behavior are cultivatable, nourishable. We learn how to exercise great patience and we bring forward reliable resilience. We begin with ourselves and our surroundings. In some ways, a Buddhist worldview is completely dissimilar to the Western dominant culture and actually there's nothing to fix, but rather we meet the present moment with all of the conditions of the present moment and find an appropriate response. How exactly do we find an appropriate response? In my practice, we call this finding your place where you are. <laughs> so one of the ways to accomplish this is through the mindfulness practices. <laughs> And I want you to hold and remember, and when it's appropriate, please share. Mindfulness is only one of the eight facets of this beautiful path that the Buddha has taught. 
what are the others? <laughs> inclusive view, you know, being able to keep a broad and inclusive perspective. Holistic thought, harmonizing speech, helpful livelihood, bringing vigor to activity, and bringing attention to our concentration. Together, all of these are known as the Eightfold Path. Mindfulness is one aspect of this. So please, keep it in its broadest cultural context. Mindfulness itself, bringing one's full attention to the task at hand, it can be something quite simple. Washing dishes, listening to a child read, walking the dog, paying for groceries, a way of bringing stillness into activity. Stillness, you know, is not limited to being physically still. Being physically still is a training. <clears throat> Slowly we increase the variables. We add in walking, bowing, chanting. <laughs> the training of being attentive then begins to leak into every aspect of our life. There was a teacher with the last name Suzuki, Shogaku Shunryu Suzuki. This is not to be confused with the great scholar T.T. Suzuki. Suzuki was my teacher's teacher. And he spoke of it, stillness being this way. It's the function of the bridge to be still, and it fulfills its function by being still. In contrast, the nature of water is movement. So in Suzuki's teaching, water fulfills its function by moving. For water, its stillness is moving. <laughs> For us, our stillness is the activity of our lives when we approach with this balance that you experienced in the brief meditation that we had. Stillness is not only accomplished in meditation, though meditation is a training, for having our body and mind be in the same place at the same time. Often people report to me uh, that as soon as their body becomes still, the mind seems to be even more busy engaging the activity of counting from one to ten. We barely get to three before the mind is off and running. And 40 minutes later, we, oh, <laughs> I hear the bell. <laughs> so training to gather oneself when the activity is simplified, as in meditation, we're basically left with breathing and blinking. All other variables have at least momentarily been set aside, allowing us to recognize in the more active part of our lives, when we're with family, with work colleagues, when we're doing laundry, gardening, there is a point of stillness even within activity. I was invited to offer you a very specific tool, so I will do that. Multiple cultures, as you know, have a variety of ways of calling upon the four directions, north, south, east, and west. And, and Buddhism is no exception to that. In this one, influenced by the many cultures through which Buddhism has traveled, through India, China, and Japan in my lineage, but also in Thailand and Korea and Cambodia, many other places uh, have been flavored by the Buddha's teaching. So I'll describe this to you as a four directions practice. In the north, we have rain. And so this is water, and the characteristic of this is fluidity and flexibility. In the south, we have wind. A little bit counterintuitively, the characteristic for this is stability. 
you who know the forest well would know it this way, <clears throat> that when uh, the wind is blowing a tree, in order to not blow over, the tree has made great effort to deepen its roots and broaden its roots. So the wind invites stability. So we have flexibility as in water and stability influenced by the wind in counterposition north and south. Then of course, east and west. East is the direction of harmony. I remember this because um, of course the sun rising in the east and along with sunrise comes bird song. One bird by itself is just singing by itself in the same way that we talking may be just speaking. But a bird is singing with other birds in harmony. <laughs> and uh, we speaking by ourselves, we're not really speaking unless we have a listener. And this requires attentive patience. Our harmonizing speech is the characteristic of the East. In the West, we have a broad horizon, especially on the West Coast here. And this is represented by a horizontally flying dragon. In Buddhism, there are many dragons. Some fly vertically, some fly, float and swim through water. This particular one flies horizontally and is known for having an inclusive view. Here's how these four directions actually work, practically speaking. If I'm kind of dug in, not unlike Michael the child in the story, uh, being mad or holding a position, I'm stuck in the South. I'm a little bit too still. I'm stuck. The remedy is to take a step towards the North, be a little bit more flexible, and thereby being both harmonious and inclusive in my view. So these four directions, if you can remember them, you may. If not, you can simply remember each person walking their place on the earth with balance in their own center, four directions, your own compassionate and balanced heart. <clears throat> Breathing in peace, stability, clarity, harmony. Breathing out love. Breathing in peace, breathing out love. In which direction are you standing or sitting right now? In which direction might you need to move to find balance for yourself and for your community? Breathe. Feel yourself on the earth, stable, clear. Now, the intuitive knowing what to do is also yours responding to the conditions from this place of stability. Find yourself where you are, beginning with your breath. I encourage you to let yourself be touched by the upcoming music. Sing along, it's easy to learn. And toward the end of this program, please let yourself be amazed by the event.
Our closing words before the Ode to Joy uh, comes from Roshi Joan Halifax. May we always hold ourselves with compassion. May we meet our challenges with ease. And may we find peace and wisdom in our hearts.
this direction. Mm -hmm. So now I extinguish the chalice, but not the light of love or the warmth of community. So till we come together again and may you go forth in peace and love. Scarlet will lead us in our go from here in peace, go in love. We ask you to reach your hands across your screens to as if we were holding hands and it would feel so good. And please follow along and sing with me, go from here in peace. Oh, hold on a second. Minor technical difficulties. All right, here we go. Go from here in peace. Shalom, salam alaikum, blessed be. And a reminder to stay home, stay safe, and stay connected. And stick around for our virtual coffee hour and dance party. And after the meeting, when you leave, please feel free to give us some feedback on the service. And if you'll give me one moment, I will get you all into our coffee hour breakout rooms. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, I feel like we've given you a lot to talk about, so don't be shy. <laughs>